James 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Many times I repeat this to myself. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. In our celebration tonight and through the coming year, we can celebrate the fact that God has answered prayer. He's given us very much through the year, through the COVID time, worldwide, in missions, at home, council, children, teenagers, young adults, buildings, finances. God has answered prayer. And tonight we celebrate that. And please do not get discouraged the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. When you have 110, 115 middle and high school students that are together every day, negativity just happens. It's one of those side effects of being around the same people all the time. And in order to combat that, we came up with the idea to have a team competition in the school. We divided all of those students up into four different groups. We named each one of them victory in a different biblical language. Those teams are all divided up, uh, not just by grade, but they're all mixed together. So we have students in sixth grade that are getting to know seniors in the school whom they never would have interacted with otherwise. When they come together as a group, you see the joy in what they're doing. And suddenly it's no longer about themselves or just their class, but it's about lifting each other up, promoting their team, working together in a way that they never would have otherwise. The competitions have been a really good way to connect with kids and connect teachers with each other, where maybe there hasn't been a lot of unity in the past, not because that wasn't the desire of the school or the church, but because humans have a way of disconnecting with each other. So we can do it in a silly way or a fun way or a competitive way, um, giving people a reason to be together. And I feel like the school functions as like a mini version of the body, where kids, they don't always experience body life. They go to see their friends, they wanna hang out, they wanna play on their phones or talk about whatever, but they don't really know what the body life is like. And so even <laughs> in, a, in a silly way, a small way, we can provide them an opportunity to be with each other and experience body life. Um, and what that means, like body life has saved me and saved my family. And so that means a lot to me that we can do that. The reason we're doing this as teachers and as a leadership team with the students is to take back the atmosphere of the school, which we're doing more and more, and we're seeing the results of this every day. My prayer is that the end result of a student's time in GGCA would not be necessarily that they go to Bible college, but that they continue to grow in the Word and recognize God in their lives. So many students are part of our ministry, whether they're on the stage with the worship team or they're working in the cafe, they know that they have a home here. And I think that is really something special. This being my first semester as director of Maryland Bible College and Seminary, uh, to say I was a little uneasy about stepping into it is an understatement. God has given me the capacity to speak to the students on an administrative level, giving directions and helping them uh, order their lives just as much as on a personal level, getting to know them and understanding where they are and having gone through many of the things that they go through themselves when I was in Bible college. So I'm really thankful for that. Another thing that I feel like God really answered our prayers on was, was our very first open house night. People around the community, students in the area, are looking at us as an actual um, opportunity for higher learning, an actual opportunity to grow 
in their knowledge and capacity with the Bible and their relationship with God. Learning about prayer. prayer. The prayer has been that our college would grow and become attractive to young people all throughout the Baltimore area, but that students straight out of high school would want to come here and go for a degree in biblical studies and see what God might have for them, that they would understand that they have calls, that they would understand that they are positionally secure in Jesus Christ, and that they would understand that they have so much room for possibilities in their life uh, when they ground themselves in the word of truth. On a personal note, prayers that have been answered, uh, a healthy addition to our family in Samuel Garrett, uh, and just a healthy family all together. Uh, it's, it's really fun to be a family of four. Hey everybody, my name is Joe Kopasek and I am a part of the Redeemed Life Ministry on Friday nights with Pastor Ramirez. We are all people that have been affected in some way, shape or form by addiction, mental health, or just the demands of life. And we've all seen God really work in our lives and bring healing and we want to share that with other people. Yeah, we've, we've seen God really move in a big way throughout the last year and there's been a couple people in particular that have come to the meetings on Friday night and they really, they really received, they really absorbed something and God touched their lives in such a profound way that they themselves got baptized. We put them into the Bible College. They've been coming every Friday night. They started coming to church every Sunday, morning, evening, and also Wednesday night. It's the body of Christ praying for us. We can never ever say enough about it. We need your prayer, we want your prayer. It's the prayer, it's the prayer of the body that brings people to us. When thinking about this year, one of the things that um, was really an answer to prayer was how um, the body came together. Um, the, when the tragedy happened in Ukraine, and I think it, there were just so many people, and me definitely one of them, that just didn't know how to, what to do, didn't want to just watch what was going on. So exciting to just see people coming together, no real specific organization of just God bringing phone calls, coming in, everyone just wanting to pitch in and help. Um, so many nurses wanting to send medical equipment and medical aid to Ukraine. Uh, it's really cool when the body comes together and you don't know everyone. You don't know how it's happening, how God's, God's doing it where you're just getting phone calls and you, how did that hospital even know that you were sending stuff to Ukraine, but you know, so-and-so talked to so-and-so and, -so and uh, that was incredible prayer, prayer, answered prayers left and right. Um, boxes upon boxes shipped of medical equipment, well, medical supplies mainly, um, it was wonderful. I think one, a prayer that I've had uh, as it relates to our youth is maybe a freshness um, or an excitement uh, or seeing that in the, the young people in our in our ministry and I think um, coming out of a COVID and the things and kind of re-entering uh, uh, a normal youth ministry life or whatever that, whatever that looks like or seems like but uh, the freshness or the excitement that um, we see in our youth ministry. That was a prayer of mine for a long time, and I think um, this year we've seen a lot of young people that are excited to be together, be around one another, and uh, participate in the different events we have and the different things we have going on. And, you know, there was always that concern about uh, should we do these things? Is it worth it to go to Europe and have Camp Life, or to go to Pennsylvania and have Camp Life, or have a rally, or have a Bible study, or whatever it is that we're doing, is, is it worth it? But seeing the fruit of that, seeing kids coming and enjoying, uh, talking about what God has said, and then just fellowshipping around that in the body of Christ has been an answer to prayer, and it's been really fun. Yeah, prayer. When I think of prayer, uh, for Richmond, how we started. I invited over everybody to just a house prayer for somebody to open up their house for us. So fast forward, uh, we meet Gavin for the first time 
and Gavin and his two kids. And uh, at the end of it, we had dinner. And at the end of it, he said that, hey, any any time that you guys want to have Bible studies or whatever at my house, like, like you, you're you more than welcome to utilize my house. So pray for a home church so we can have our own um, and just really have our doors open. Knowing that God is behind this completely has just given me a sense of peace and just overwhelming confidence that he can do anything. And with that gives me strength and confidence in myself that like with him, I can do anything that I didn't think I was capable of. Um, if you would have asked me two years ago if I would be involved in planning a church, <laughs> I wouldn't believe it. Um, and it's funny even saying that out loud, but just to being able to be used by God and letting him lead us, the fact that we don't know what we're doing, we can say that confidently, but also know that like he's behind it and it takes a lot of pressure off of us. And my faith is strengthened in that because he's gonna do it, you know, really with or without us, but just the fact that he's choosing to use us for this and knowing that he's just leading us every step of the way. And it, it does help me and also my personal life and the little things, I think. I don't have as much anxiety when I'm faced with the little day-to-day -day struggles, you know, or with my patients, you know. I used to have this mentality of wanting to be the save, savior for them, and it that puts a lot of pressure on myself. But to know that I can just give them what I can and let God do the rest and give my prayers up to Him, it, it gives me peace. So with that, I can continue with my walk with God and whatever else he has for this ministry in Richmond in full confidence.